Okay, so 6.4 yesterday, all we really did was I just gave you some new formulas. And we talked about how you could find like sine of 105, sine 75, sine of new angles. As long as they're basically two, two unit circle angles that you know, either in adding or subtracting. So like, we also did, I think, tan 195. And you guys chose to use 135 and 60 for that, right? But this is just a bunch of formulas. Okay, if you're keeping a formula sheet, I suggest you transfer these onto that formula sheet so you have them all in one place. Okay, so yesterday, sort of toward the end of the period, we did a problem kind of like this. So I wanted to start the period off again with a problem like this to remind you of how it's done. So this problem is very ugly, but if you look at the basic layout of everything, it looks kind of like one of the formulas, right? Just the basic layout. So, if you had to choose a formula from the left board that this most resembles, which one would it be? Looks like what? Yeah, it looks like a tangent difference formula. Looks like tan of A minus B, where A is this angle and B is this angle. See? All right. So if that's the case, then all of this nonsense is just this in disguise. Tan of pi over 5 minus 11 pi over 30. And if you combine these two together, we basically get 6 pi minus 11 pi. So this just comes out to the question, what is 10 of negative pi over 6? That's just a unit circle problem. You can think of it as 10 negative 30 degrees. That's all it means. Nothing tricky there. And so you just look on the unit circle. Hopefully you have it memorized. Negative 30 degrees right about here. Coordinates are uh, root 3 over 2, comma negative half. So when you do y over x, you get negative root 3 over 3. So what was a complicated problem is actually just a unit circle problem in disguise. And we did one similar to this yesterday, but it was I think it was a, uh, I want to say it was a sign problem. Okay, let's go on and talk about a different topic. Okay. How would you verify an identity? Verify an identity. Okay, so now that we have these new rules, right, we can actually substitute in, anytime we see a, like a cosine of something minus something, we can break it into this pattern. Okay, so we're going to just steal that formula from the left board for cosine A minus B. So since this is a cosine of two things subtracted, you can break it into cos pi over 2, cos theta plus sine pi over 2, sine theta. And it looks like we made things worse, but actually cosine of pi over 2 just means cosine 90 is all it means. And this has actually been just 0. Cosine theta, I don't know what theta is, so I'll just leave it like that. Right. It's going to get multiplied by 0 in a minute. Okay, uh, sine pi over 2 means sine 90. It's just 1. That's all it is. Don't know what theta is yet. Probably never will. Isn't this just sine theta? Okay. So what happens is this goes to 0, and this just goes to sine theta. So the last two steps are very trivial on this. Very simple. Okay. Would that be a one-point problem? Um, that one probably, I think on a test I might make it worth two because you had to use the unit circle to get the zero and the one. Yeah. So I would be looking to see that you did the correct split. You'd get one point automatically just for getting the here. And then plugging in the, the zero and the one gives you the rest of the problem. Two points. 
if it was multiple choice, um, it would have to be written very creatively. Like you can actually make identity multiple choice problems, but it's very, very challenging to write them. So I find them challenging to write them. Probably would be free response mostly on this next test. Uh, okay, so you can do the same thing with this, okay? Sine of pi over 2 minus theta. It's just the sine of something minus something. So we're going to use the sine difference formula this time. And it would look like this. Sine of pi over 2 cosine of theta minus cosine of pi over 2 sine of theta. And this time the 1 is here. And the cosine is of pi over 2. There's your 0. This time it's in the second term. So this just ends up being cosine theta minus 0. You can put minus 0 if you want, just to show all your work, you know. But I probably wouldn't mark you down or anything for that. I definitely wouldn't mark you down if you didn't write minus 0. So this step is optional on the test. Those aren't very hard. But listen, we just proved something we already knew. Um, this one we just did, for example, let's look at it from a totally different perspective. We have this. This is the original problem. We know that we could pull a minus sign out of any sine function, any odd function. So let's pop a minus sign out. And what that does is it reverses it by 90 degrees. It reverses the 90 minus theta to make it theta minus 90. Doesn't this just mean that if you take a sine function, sine graph, and you flip it upside down and shift it to the right 90, you have a cosine graph? Isn't that kind of what that means, graphically speaking? It means flip the sine upside down, slide it to the right 90, and lo and behold, you have a cosine function. It's true. And we've proved it right here. This is the proof of that. Graphs were very convincing the last chapter. You can see if you shifted them, they look one and the same. But this is proof positive so we that that works. And there are many other ways to prove it. But starting with these assumptions, this is how you do it. Let's do another harder identity here. What is this one? Okay, I'll give you a second to copy the problem, and then we'll decide which side we think is actually uglier. So I'll let you decide that in a minute. Which side is actually more complex? Okay, so which side is it? Is the left side messier, or is the right side messier? Yeah, the right side has four terms, but think about what the left side actually means. Yeah, there's actually eight things going on on the left, if you think about it, because sine of a plus b on its own is this awful formula. It means sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. Not to mention the denominator is sine a minus b, so that's going to be sine a cos b minus cos a sine b. So this thing's all actually implicitly a lot messier than the right side is. So what I'm going to do is replace the top left with the formula for sine sum. So it's going to look like this. Sine A cos B plus cos A sine B. And the bottom is very similar, sine A cos B minus cos A sine B. And the right side is just a bunch of tangent stuff. OK, so before you move on in this problem, Look and see what's the same already, because there are some things you don't want to change about this left side. The left side's obviously the messier side, isn't it? But what's something we do kind of like a 
about this. Like, what, what's the same on both sides of the equation? The signs match, right? Like, you have a positive here, and negative here, positive here, and negative here. So this is going to be really an easy problem, actually. My goal is very simple. I'm going to try to make this look like a tan A right here. If I can make it look like a tan A, everything else should work itself out. Okay? I'm going to try to make this look like a tan A to match this over here. Okay, well, it's certainly not a tan A yet. But if I try to get rid of the cos B, get rid of that, and if I divide this by, uh, by cos A, it will turn into a tan A. So what I'm saying is if I divide by cos B, I'll eliminate this guy. And if I divide by cos A, cos alpha, this will become a tan. Right? So I'm going to divide this by cos A and cos B at the same time. Okay? <coughs> So I'm going to get in here, I'm going to go like this. Uh, I, meant, I was going to do cosine A and cosine B right here. Cosine A, see the tangent there? I just forced it. There's a tangent A now. And I'm going to put a cos B here. That's to get rid of that cos B that I didn't want. And if that's what I'm going to do to my first fraction in the complex fraction, I'm going to have to do it to every one of them. I cannot even change what I'm doing. I have to do it all throughout. Everywhere. I wasn't focused on all four of those guys, but I need to do this to all four of those guys and just hope it all works out. Okay. So some of this simplifies right away, right? Like you can see the cos B cancels out. Here the cos A cancels out. Here the cos B cancels out. Here the cos A cancels out. Obviously, you can't cancel like a cos B and a cos A. Those aren't the same thing. But all the cos b's and cos a's that do cancel are gone. And we are left with sine a over cos a plus sine b over cos b over sine a over cos a minus sine b over cos b. Isn't that just tan a plus tan b over tan a minus tan b? OK, so we did it. So this is just tan a my, uh, plus tan b tan A minus tan B. And we did prove it. So actually not a very hard problem if you know kind of what to do. If you didn't know what to do and you've never seen anyone do this before, you might have spent a long time trying to figure out what to do. So what was my basic strategy on that? I forced the tangent right. I have two identical looking objects, something plus something or something minus something. I just didn't like how my first term wasn't a tan A. So I fixed that, and everything else fixed itself. OK? All right, so let's go on and uh, try something totally different. Can I move the slide? OK. Let's take a look at these ones. It says, uh, if it is known that sine alpha is negative 2 fifths, and alpha is between negative 90 and 0. And that cosine beta is negative root 3 over 3, where beta is between 180 and 270. Find the exact value of these things. And I think there's a typo here. I think this meant to ask for sine b. Sine beta. Well, they already gave us cosine beta in the instructions. OK. So here's what I do on a problem like this. I will take this, okay, and I will draw a diagram for it. Okay, I'm gonna draw a diagram for it. Okay, so this is just saying right here, this negative pi over two is less than a is less than zero. All that means, let's put the calculator this way. All this really means is that the angle is in quadrant 4. That's all this means. Okay? Negative pi over 2 is this bottom angle, right? 0 is the right hand side of the angle, or the uh, axis. So we're talking about alpha living somewhere in here. It's some negative angle in here, see? 
And since this really just means y over r, right, isn't that what sine means, y over r? Unless you're on the unit circle, but I don't think this is going to be on the unit circle. So let's do y over r for that. This would seem to imply that we could use for y coordinate negative 2 as long as we make the r5. So I've drawn a little sketch of what I think this scenario is. It's an angle called alpha living in quadrant 4 with a y coordinate of negative 2 on the terminal point and a 5 for the distance to the origin. Okay, now I'm going to try to find the missing coordinate x. So we can use this to get x. So I don't know what x is, but I know that y is negative 2 and that r is 5. And I end up with x squared equals 21, x equals plus or minus root 21. Now you tell me, I'm in quadrant 4 right now. Am I supposed to be having a positive x coordinate or a negative x coordinate down in quadrant 4? Should be positive, right? So I'm going to choose the x equals root 21. It's the only answer that makes sense. And I'm going to put it right here. And I'm going to hold on to this picture. I need this picture. But before I move on to this problem, I have to draw a picture for this now. Cos beta equals blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we're on to a second picture now. For this, we're done with the alpha diagram. We're on to the beta diagram. Let me move this stuff over here. Give myself a little more space. Okay, so for the next diagram, I'm going to use green. And it is a picture of an angle. Now, which quadrant is it in? It says pi and 3 pi over 2. Like, which, which quadrant is that in? If your angle is between pi and 3 pi over 2, which quadrant is that? Pi is here, right? 3 pi over 2 is here. So which quadrant are we in? Third quadrant. OK. Okay, so beta is this angle, some positive angle between pi and 3 pi over 2. So I'm drawing a little sketch. Remember, this just means x over r. So I believe I know the x coordinate of this point is negative root 3. And I don't know the y coordinate, but I know the distance to the origin is 3. So that's because they said the cosine was negative root 3 over 3. Now I need to get that y coordinate the same way that I did on the previous step. So now I'm going to use x squared plus y squared equals r squared again. This time I'm trying to find the y coordinate. So negative root 3 squared plus y squared equals 3 squared. In other words, 3 plus y squared equals 9. y equals plus or minus root 6. Which one should I pick? I'm in quadrant 3 right now. Let's go with the negative, right? OK. So negative root 6 will be my y coordinate. OK, these two pictures are really important because they represent the answers to all of your questions up above. OK, so let's just go back and find everything they asked for. First of all, cosine alpha. Cosine alpha. Well, that's just x over r using the red diagram. OK, so I'll try to color code everything. We want x over r. And we are using the red picture only, because that's the alpha diagram. So it's going to be root 21 over 5. That's the answer. Root 21 over 5. Uh, sine beta, now that's going to be the green diagram. That's our beta diagram. So sine beta will just be negative root 6 over 3, y over r, see? So y over r negative root 6 over 3. This next question looks intimidating. It says, find cosine of alpha plus beta. We don't have a picture for alpha plus beta. We have a picture for alpha, a picture for beta. Alpha plus beta is the sum of these two angles. Okay, So I suppose we could draw a third picture altogether, but we don't need to. Remember, cosine alpha plus beta is cos, cos minus sine, sine. So I'm going to write that right above this. This means cos, cos minus sine, 
sign. And I'm just going to steal the ingredients from my pictures to answer the question. So I'm going to show my work for this one down below in purple. Okay? So here's my work for C down here. My goal is to find cosine of alpha plus beta. I will do that by finding cosine of alpha, cosine of beta, minus sine of alpha, sine of beta. And everything I need is right there in the pictures. For example, to get cosine alpha, I can use my diagram in red, root 21 over 5. For cosine beta, that's from the green picture, negative root 3 over 3. For sine alpha, that's from the red picture again, negative 2 fifths, except I meant to color code that in red, negative 2 fifths. And for sine of beta, that's the y over x for the second diagram. Okay, so this just gives me negative root 63, which is also 3 rad 7. So it's 3 rad 7 over 15 minus 2 root 6 over 15. But they already have a common denominator, so I can just put them together like that. 3 root 7 minus 2 root 6. <coughs> Okay, let me switch colors here, and we will do the last question. Let's use brown. Okay, the last question, D, was up here. Find sine of alpha plus beta. Find sine of alpha plus beta. Sine of alpha plus beta is sine alpha cos beta plus cos alpha sine beta. So what happens is it's the same four ingredients. It's these same four colored fractions, but in a different arrangement. Okay, so for example, sine alpha is actually the negative two-fifths. Cos beta is actually the negative three of three. So we just got to plop everything in in the right spots. Try to make these fill in the blank like I'm doing. Just stick the numbers in. Okay, so here goes. Uh, sine alpha is negative two-fifths. Cos beta is the negative root 3 over 3. Then we have cos alpha. That was the uh, root 21 over 5. And lastly, sine beta. That was the negative root 6 over 3. Okay, so my work is... Switch back to brown here. This is going to give me 2 root 3 over 15. And the second one gives me negative root 126, which I believe is 3 root 14, if it's rationalized, or uh, simplified. The truth is, it doesn't matter what questions they ask you. Like for part E, they could ask you for tan of A plus B. All the ingredients are in that, those two diagrams. Okay? For example, they ask you, what is tan of A plus B? Just go up here, look at your little pickies. You've got two pictures there. You can grab your tangents from here, stick them in the formula. Okay, so the sky's the limit on what four questions they'll ask you. I just did these four, but there's many others they could ask. Uh, yes, question? Yeah. Oh, do you have to draw the diagrams to solve these, like for cos alpha? Could you have just done one minus sine squared? Yes. And gotten cos yes. squared and then square root of that? Yes, I was debating when I was teaching, trying to teach this, I thought, should I, should I have them find what sine alpha, or what cosine alpha is using the 1 minus uh, yeah. sine squared? That's right. right. Can we use 1 minus 4 25ths to get cosine? The answer is yes, but be very careful with your signs, S-I-G then. Because um, you have to keep track. Okay, I'm in quadrant 4 here, okay? And when I write down that cosine, it needs to be a positive root 21 over 5. Okay? And then when you do this one, realize I'm in quadrant 3, so when I find sine beta, I need it to be negative. If you keep that rule in mind, you can do it that way. Could you I don't teach it that way because I know for a fact there's going to be negative errors on my tests. Could you also do 5 or 2 minus sine is equal to, like a 90 degrees minus sine is equal to cosine? 
Uh, no, because we're not trying to find alpha or beta. Notice throughout this entire problem, we never knew what the angle alpha was, and we never knew what the angle beta was. That was never our goal. My guess is alpha is, you know, like, I don't know, like negative 65 degrees. But we never actually found that. We didn't need that. That wasn't the question. And these would certainly be without a calculator, these problems. That means you would not have the luxury of ever calculating what alpha was or beta. So you'd have to just fit all the fractions together is the idea. Study this example. The book has more examples. I'm done. But that's enough for tonight, okay? You guys...